I really think the MCU has some great moments. I'm not saying they don't. I love the MCU. I just think that unless we want to call all the movies flawless, then we have to accept that they have some rough moments too. I just prefer to focus on the good things in life. And I like to call things the way they are. Name five bad moments from the MCU. <laughs> Only a few name five good ones. Fine, fine, fine. At number 10, we have the moment from Age of Ultron when Bruce Banner falls on Black Widow's chest. During the epic introduction to Ultron, what was going to be an epic high stakes battle becomes a little less cool when they throw some cheap slapstick into the mix. As Bruce and Natasha narrowly miss a laser blast and go flying over the bar, Bruce's face goes right into her chest. And although these jokes are sometimes funny here and there, the trope is tired at this point and comes off as pretty aged and corny. I get it that there's some budding sexual tension between Bruce and Natasha by this point, but I feel like they could have put it in a scene before or after this epic battle, not during the first major confrontation of the movie. And maybe a little awkward accidental hand touch, not a full face to the chest joke. I don't know, that's just me. Number nine, I am Iron Man. Both times. Not including Edward Norton's Incredible Hulk, Robert Downey Jr. kicked off the MCU with a bang that almost no one expected in 2008's Iron Man. He killed it as Iron Man, being the heart of the MCU for the next 11 years until the character's self-sacrifice to save the universe and defeat Thanos in 2019's Avengers Endgame. He ended that first film by embracing his new superhero persona in a very big screw it moment when he told the whole world, I am Iron Man. With the credits coming in with awesome Black Sabbath music. It was almost too perfect. To bring it all to an end though, stealing the Infinity Stones off of Grimace's big purple fist and responding to his inevitability with the simple phrase he kicked this all off with. A beautiful moment to finish off the greatest threat any of the superheroes had ever faced and a perfect comeback to a statement that proved to be pretty inaccurate. At number eight is the destruction of Xandar in Infinity War. Now, I love Infinity War, but one of my main criticisms of the movie has always been that it's too hard to track how Thanos gets all the Infinity Stones. In the comics, this is obviously explored across multiple issues and for good reason. It is essential to the payoff of Thanos carrying out his final plan. But in the movie, this process isn't quite given the respect it needs and especially not in regards to the Power Stone. The way that the stone is acquired by Thanos is when he steals it from the planet Xandar, which he of course destroys in the process. But not only do we not get to see any of this happen, it's just told to us in passing by Thor. And on top of that, the Guardians of the Galaxy don't even really react, or at least not how they should have, considering they've just gotten done protecting the now non-existent planet. I understand that the movie needed to be kept short, but all of the other stones get their own full scenes, exploring how they were acquired by Thanos. And the Power Stone, which probably has the most canonical significance by this point in the MCU, save maybe the Space Stone, just gets a passing remark. All I can say to that is, well, rest in peace to the Xandarians. Number seven, Hulk fighting Iron Man. The question of which heroes the Incredible Hulk can defeat is always an incredibly fun topic. He usually plants incredible scenarios of some of the strongest beings in comicdom, but one person who is often overlooked is Iron Man. Now granted, in the comic universe, there is almost no chance that Iron Man will come out on top in a fight against the Hulk. It may be a long fight, depending on the Stark tech being used, but I digress. The MCU gave us a good look at why Iron Man is no pushover when it pitted a raged off the hinges Hulk against the newly unveiled Hulk Buster armor created by Tony Stark. This fight is awesome. First off, the high octane speed of it keeps it engaging literally the whole time. Secondly, it perfectly shows how much of a threat the Hulk can actually pose and how absolutely terrifying he actually is. And thirdly, bouncing off of that, Robert Downey Jr. shows us both how utterly terrifying it would be to fight a monster like the Hulk in a suit of armor while still remaining incredibly hilarious and delivering every line with a perfect mix of fear, humor, and high stress that the four minute and 20 second scene deserves. And bonus points for the end of the scene when the Hulk slash Bruce Banner finally sees the amount of destruction and pain he has caused lets us into his mind just enough to feel bad until Iron Man knocks him out cold. At number six is the origin of Nick Fury's missing eye in Captain Marvel. As much as I love the relatively newer white Titian approach to the MCU where everything is laden with quips and goofs, this is an example of when the jokes can just go a bit too far. The first time I saw this was in 
in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 with Drax's overused literalness and well, I think it's fair to say that Love and Thunder just wasn't serious enough. But one moment in particular that demonstrates how jokes can sometimes ruin things in the MCU is when we see that Nick Fury loses his eye to a CGI cat named Goose, who simply just scratches it. This is seen as a throwaway insert that didn't really need to be there and honestly isn't even played off that well in Jackson's acting. Now I realize this is obviously meant to poke fun at the question of where his eye patch is in these earlier days, but personally, I feel like there was room to actually explore a cooler, more epic backstory as to how Fury gets his eye patch. But instead, it was thrown away with the bathwater entirely, in my opinion, in a manner that I felt was unneeded and a little too silly. Number five, the airport fight. Look, I know the MCU's Civil War was not on the same scale as it was in the comics. Not by a long shot. And yeah, 12 superheroes running at each other at an abandoned airport may seem silly to some, but for those of us who are fans, this battle was amazing. Seeing the heroes who we have seen battle other huge threats together battle each other with some huge new players joining the wider world of the MCU with Winter Soldier and Scott Lang finally being in an ensemble and with Black Panther and Spider-Man getting their MCU debuts, every hero got moments to shine and have some fun. The little scuffle between Spider-Man and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and even when he fought Cap was such a great display of why Tom Holland's Spider-Man is fantastic. Ant-Man had awesome moments taking on Black Widow, entering Tony's armor, and going giant sized. It was weirdly fun and yet intense and ended on a note that reminded everyone that this is all more serious than they've been taking it, leading to the much more emotionally weighted and awesome fight between Iron Man, Cap, and Bucky. At number four, we have a more recent blunder from Thor Love and Thunder, and that is the awful floating head CGI of Axel, son of Heimdall. This is one of those moments that is slowly but surely becoming a meme online, and for good reason. The movie had a budget of $250 million, and to see something this low effort tells us that either A, the VFX teams were being heavily overworked, B, this scene was thrown in at the last minute and the CGI was rushed, or C, the filmmakers genuinely thought this was passable. Now, I do a bit of basic animation here and there, and what I find to be the worst part of the execution on this one is that the boy's face isn't even tracked along with the mask that was created to cut out his head. Meaning, when they grab the footage of the actor talking and cut his face out to place it in Thor's scene, you can tell Axel is swaying slightly. And instead of the artist accounting for the sway, part of his face gets cut off by the edge of the cutout, making it look like his head is getting skinnier and then wider back and forth. It's really a strange sight to see in such a massively funded project, and although I don't like to hate on the VFX teams too much because they're basically magicians who we often take for granted, this is not their proudest moment. Number three, open your eye. In the first Doctor Strange movie, Stephen Strange is an arrogant and cocky world-class surgeon who gets seriously humbled when he crashes his sports car while distractedly driving, ruining his hands. It causes the former surgeon to go off in search of any possible way of fixing his hands and returning to his life work. His search takes him as far as Nepal and Kathmandu, where he finds the Kamar Taj, seeking a mystical form of healing which Strange passes off as hokey pseudoscience and a waste of his time. Well, time to be humbled again, Doctor. As the Ancient One, played wonderfully by the ever amazing Tilda Swinton, opens his eyes to the spectrum of the infinite universes, we get to witness possibly the wildest display of visual effects in a Marvel film ever. With Steven zipping across dimensions in his astral form, the entire sequence is a treat to the eyes and the mind, with visuals that aren't easy to comprehend on first viewing. Even six years after the film's release, this scene still holds up against other VFX heavy moments in films that came after it. And I think another Doctor Strange special effects moment of greatness that deserves at least a mention is that awesome Doctor Strange versus Thanos fight in Infinity War. So awesome. At number two though is the time that I'm sure we're all familiar with, which is when Quill loses his cool and screws everything up during the final battle with Thanos in Infinity War. This is one of the most infuriating moments, not just in the MCU, but in any movie I've ever seen. I get the argument that this is just part of Quill's character, that he's liable to act on emotion, but I still don't think this writing is justified. Because for Quill to hit Thanos like that and blow the operation on a whim isn't just emotional, it's stupid. 
So stupid that it's not even believable that any character other than maybe Hulk would do something like this ever. Now hear me out, I'm not saying that Quill shouldn't have screwed up the plan at that moment. I get that he's a big player in this climax after what happens to Gamora, but what I think they should have done was have Quill find out about Gamora before the battle and then in a fit of anger secretly prepare what he thinks to be a foolproof plan to kill Thanos himself. And when this moment comes, he would foolishly enact that plan which of course would fail and then the movie would continue. I mean I'm not saying I'm smarter than the writers or anything, but I just think this moment was made to be too frustrating. I'd at least like to see Quill face some kind of scrutiny for this mistake in upcoming MCU stories. I mean, come on. And in at number one is Avengers Assemble. Not to sound too much like a nerd or anything, but I went to see Endgame by myself at a viewing early in the day because I figured the theater would be less packed. This was the week the movie released, so I was dumb to think that. The theater was full, but it didn't stop me enjoying the movie, and it definitely didn't stop the involuntary wave of feeling like both crying and laughing when in the climax of the movie, when the odds just stacked themselves up against the remaining Avengers, when the alternate time timeline Thanos attacked after they had assembled the Infinity Stones. We see Steve standing alone against Thanos' forces, only for a radio static to come in on his earpiece as Sam Wilson tunes in on your left, and a sorcerer's portal slowly opens up, revealing T'Challa, Shuri, and Okoye waltzing on in. That small glimmer of hope is enough to bring a tear to your eye, but then the small glimmer becomes an outstanding wave of relief, happiness, and spectacle as a whole damn army of of every single hero plus the combined forces of sorcerers as guardians, wakandans and ravagers and more all come pouring through multiple various portals in a huge sweeping sequence culminating in Steve calling Mjolnir to him as he yells Avengers and as the scene goes quiet he utters the last three syllables that fans have been waiting for ever since the first Avengers movie hit screens in 2012. Assemble. Sparking one of the most awesome battles in MCU history. I literally had goosebumps just typing this. Alright, I'd say we both sufficiently showed five good and five bad moments in the MCU. Yeah, I'd say you're right. I'd say furthermore that movies and cinema in general are a form of art. Good moments and bad moments come together to form a finished product that a viewer is free to interpret how they wish. Disagreements between two viewers may happen as a result, but in the end we are simply taking part in an artistic discussion about our individual thoughts and feelings towards said art. And now we'd like to ask you to join in on that discussion and let us know in the comments what you thought about the points made in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe here at Top 10 Nerd, and until next time, I've been your host Adam Andrews. And I've been Ben Ball. Until next time. Peace out, nerds. Take it easy.